Same problem if we're actually going back over today, how to find the distance between the points and the lines. So you'll see that again. So you'll get kind of a review for that quiz today. All right, so here's sort of where we left off. I want you to do this problem really quickly. Let's see, which one am I going to do? We actually got through some of those, but I'm not going to have you do those. Do that one right there. It is our test. Yes, yes it is. Uh, I think, oh, actually, hold on, not that one, because we did that one in class. There, that one, do that one in Can class. I get There, that one right there. So use the three ordered pairs to draw it on the graph paper, and I'll pass more graph paper out. And then I want you to reflect that across y equals one. If you have old graph paper, please use it because I don't get unlimited copies and I already ran out of it. Make sure you label your graphs. Make sure you label your graphs when you do this with whatever you're doing. Like don't just do the don't just do the problem and not write on there that you just reflected it across y equals one. You need to know what you did so you can go back and use that to help you with other problems. So yeah, if you just have two images on there, that's not really very helpful when you go back and try to be with other problems when we give you them. It's not crazy. What? It's not crazy. Yeah. I just I want that little graph paper I wanted. That's the one. That's the one that you gave us on. Really? I says I would. That's the stuff I was trying to find. Like, yeah, because no. it has it goes up. It matches this. It goes all the way up to ten. See, only go to seven. Okay. So I need to see if I can find that one. I must have. I think we had to this from two last week. Somebody else had that in one of the other classes today. I I can't find it anywhere. Like, I don't know where those graphs are. How many times? I think you did this just one. Yeah, because this is all my graph paper over here. And I didn't see them anywhere in this. So, here. Yeah, I bet the salt. So, I'm actually going to try to make more copies of that. I'll give you another minute. No. Oh, basically, why were you doing that? Um, I have a check book. I have a check book. I have a check book. I have to start using smaller triangles. Oh, it was a thing like trace years to be able to correspond. Like that, but you have to figure out the steps. Oh, why? Oh, yeah, that was just a bit of a problem. I thought, well, you know, 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 yeah, yeah, of course we get that. It's just one of those class we got. Yeah, well, I can't, I couldn't find like these are different. These have numbers and they only go to seven. What are you doing? Why across? Is this one goes to this 10. This is left and right. Yeah. Where, where would the line, line reflection be? Yeah. Well, if y equals z needs to be one. Every value, every y on the line has to be one. So. So it has to be left and right, right? Because if I draw it up and down, then the y value is changing. But you go up and down, it's higher. Good. Yeah. So again, you can memorize it, or if you truly understand it, then you won't forget. Sometimes memorizing it, people will get it wrong because they get confused. I need to make some copies of those.
All right, so you should be done. It should not take very long. The only part you got to remember how to do is where does the line of reflection go? So if it says y equals a number, again, it's better if you understand how to create the line of reflection, but if you just have to memorize it, that's better than nothing, I guess. So if y, if it says y equals 1, that means every ordered pair on the line, the y part of the ordered pair, the y coordinate, has to be 1. So it is not here. Don't write this. Do not write this. Do not write this. Do not write this. This is what a lot of people did because they thought, oh, well, the y axis is up and down. So y equals 1 must be up and down. It is not, right? Because the y value is changing on it. The y, every single point has a different y value. We need y to always be 1. So that would be x, because then x would be 1 everywhere on that line. So y equals 1 has to be a horizontal line. So just think of the opposite. Again, I'd like you to understand that the y value needs to be 1 everywhere, right? So if I pick any ordered pair on that line right here, that's an that point right there has an x and a y value, right? Negative 2 comma 1. Now I'm going to pick another one way over here. Well, that's 9 comma 1. Now I'll pick one here. That's 3 comma 1. Every point I pick, what's the y value? It's 1, right? That's why the line looks like that, because we need the y to always be 1. That's the graph of y equals 1. Because y equals 1 means y has to always be 1. Now again, if you're not understanding that, then you just got to memorize y equals a number, left and right, x equals a number, is up and down, y axis is up and down, x axis is left and right. You got to memorize, memorize, but like I said, understanding it, you won't forget it. Memorizing it, you could get them confused. All right, so now with that in mind, that's my line of reflection. I ignore the x-axis. Do not accidentally count to that. And I go from this pre-image point. Remember, we never move the image. We move the points. I count to the line of reflection, one, two, three. And then I continue to go in the same direction to the other side, the same distance. And that gives me my image point. So I went from the pre-image point to the image point. A to A prime if they have letters. So now from red again, I go from the red pre-image point down in this case to the line of reflection three. Well, then I keep going three more. And that's my new or my image point. The green is on the line. It's on the line. It doesn't, the second point doesn't go anywhere. So that's my final point. Uh, I'll use a highlighter so we can kind of see. And there would be the. That's what I know. So, assume we did this on a fence, right? That new. Reflection, right? But we have to add the points that it, like the points that it is, the point, point that it is now. So I write the ordered pairs. Yeah, you need to know how to do both. So my, so here's my famous expression, just to make sure. So the question might not give you a graph at all, and it might say, what are the three ordered pairs or the three coordinates for the pre-image? if you reflect it across y equals one. So it might be no graph at all. Well, then if I'm asking you for the three coordinates, you can still graph it out to get your answer. I'll give you graph paper, or it might just be on the graph or on the quiz. But then your final answer would be to write the ordered pairs for all of those. And there's no rule when x equals a number or y equals a number. There's not a rule for it. So you'd really have to graph it out. Uh, you could then write your new ordered pairs, which would be what? One, two, three, one, two, three, four. 
So three, actually negative three comma four. And they would have letters on them or something to, to show which point was which. Then one, two, three, four, five. Oh, when you do this part, now you need to use the X and the Y axis. When you're figuring out what the X and the Y coordinates are, you need to use the X and the Y axis. Don't, don't accidentally count from the line of reflection to do this part. That's only when you're visually creating the image. If I'm trying to come up with X and Y values for the ordered pairs, that has to come from the X and the Y axis, always. And then what, which one did I just do? One, two, three, four, five, and then one, two, so negative two. And the green one doesn't change, so that's negative seven comma one. So then you'd have to write them down like that. And like I said, normally there'd be letters identifying them like. Uh, probably A would be the red, but it doesn't matter. So if those were the way it was written, then you would say this is A prime. Um, which one would negative five? So this would be B prime, it looks like. And that would be C prime. So that's something like that. Again, I'm mostly concerned that you can come up with the correct points, but you do need to understand the notation for your answer as well. So, was it, was it for reflection? Or was it for, is it for transition that you have to like, like minus or like do something with the new ones, the old ones? You can add to the old ones. You can just add a value. That was the option for translation. All right, um, we went over right at the end of class. So again, we had done that one in class. I feel like that's fairly tricky. It's the first tricky one. I don't think translations were super tricky. Uh, I don't think a reflection across the X or the Y axis is very tricky. But when you get into doing it where the either the X or the Y equals a number, that's a little trickier just because you, you can get confused with the X and the Y axis, you gotta ignore those. We also, yeah, we also did this one. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on these next two. We said if Y equals X, the process is still the same. It's just that second step where we figure out where the line of reflection goes is a little trickier. The line of reflection is every ordered pair where Y equals X. Well, we said, OK, well, let's just think about what that means. That means that we have the same number in the spots for the Y and the X. So one comma one would work, six comma six. So all of these points would be on the line of reflection. So I could just put a couple points on the graph. One comma one was there. Six comma six would be there. Negative three, negative three would be down here. And then just draw a line through those points. That's your line of reflection. Again, if you don't understand what I just said, you have to memorize y equals x. Looks like a diagonal line that goes up left to right. Understand it? Probably in decent shape. Yeah. Now we did that one, so I'm not I'm not doing one with that. We already did it. But we did not do this. So you are doing that. So I kind of already gave you the difficult part of it. But I want you to take that image and reflect it across y equals negative x. Uh, if you can't see exactly where the image is, doesn't really matter because you should be using the three what are pairs to create the image anyway. So that's your pre-image. One comma four, four comma four, one negative one. Figure that part out. Oh, actually, I, I do. I think I did the rule for this. If not, I'll show you. So there is a rule for this. When Y equals X and you're reflecting across that, if you notice 
when we created, I erased it all, but when we created all the new points, well, it they just changed position. The Y and the X just changed positions. So negative seven, four became four, negative seven. Negative five, seven became seven, negative five. This is back to Y equals X. I'm just, I don't remember if I got this on the, the recording or not, so I'm just kind of saying it. Negative three comma one became one, negative three. Why did you do that? Well, when, when we created it visually, which is the way I taught, mm -hmm. it moved to here. We did all this yesterday. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Well, there is a rule you can use for this. The rule is that your original X and Y flip positions and become that. So if you are reflecting across y equals x, you might see this rule on the on the EOC or the district thing or something. I'm not going to do anything with it. I'm just going to have you create the, the new image. So again, that is for y equals x, not what you're doing right now. Oh my god, I just no, I said that several times. So again, this is I'm mainly making sure it's on the recording. But yeah, this is what we ended with yesterday. I can't remember if I actually put the rule in the at the end or not for this particular situation. There's also going to be a rule for this too. Really, the only reflections that don't have rules is when y equals a number or x equals a number. Because there can't be a rule because we don't know which number you're going to wind up getting for y or x. Question. This one. It just be like look good, man. That would just make why negative. Are you talking about for the rule, or are you talking about for the line? Like right like this one, the rule for this one. Why would negative for any? Uh, there's a little more to it than yeah. Well, like mm -hmm. the same thing with the other one, except the y becomes the opposite sign. Correct. So they will also change like yeah, they flip so like, like just like correct. the other one, except y becomes negative, right? And yeah, so two things. Yeah, so because it flips this means yes. Because the whole image is moving so here. Why do you put negative x? Is this still going across like that? Or is there something different since it's a negative x? Or does it really matter? What were you saying? Talking about across the y equals negative x. Are you but are you talking about where to draw the line yeah, of reflection? Yeah, across. Well, it'll be diagonal, but you it won't it obviously it can't be the same diagonal line because this is different, right? Yeah, we can't change that and get the same exact line of reflection. So it won't change. Put a other one. So think about it. If my line of reflection needs to match this, then that means the X and the Y are gonna be the same number, so not left just right. opposite signs. Just right and left. Uh, down. Well, again, I would still say left or right, but I would say it goes down. Yeah, right. Is that what you're saying? Right. Yes, correct. Okay. Exactly. Well. So again, y equals negative x means if x is negative one, then y is one. So again, the number part's the same, but x has the opposite sign. Then you do the square thing. Hold on, just a second, Jacob. So I could say if x is negative five, y is five. If x is positive three, y is negative three. They have opposite signs. Sorry. Oh, you didn't graph it. You're just doing points. Um, so they would flip, and then the y would change. So the four negative one that we got. Yeah. I think was it the y that we sent to the y that we sent to us? Because it's flipping. Oh, 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 I see. So when when the y sees, so yeah, not the final y, but the original y. Yeah. Again, I don't I don't memorize the rules, so. Um, or the, I can say real quick. So if that line of reflection is there, then we would oh. flip that over and it would land here. So it would be X would be well. 
I figured it out. Yeah, yeah. So the y, so the original y becomes a negative. If I got a whole, yes. I have a whole bunch of squares. So that that right. Right. Oh my god! Actually, though, how many times yeah. will we have this word? I was thinking. Actually, when I first looked at it visually, I thought it was going to flip to the other side of the x. How many tests will we have this word in total? Probably about the same. I mean, again, remember. Quizzes, number of quizzes doesn't match number of Sorry, grades. Yeah. Some of them are for more than one grade. Uh -huh. like oh, this one of these quizzes. This one. I mean, we typically have nine weeks. We have one almost every week. So seven. So we missed one quiz already because of the day off that you guys had. We're going to still do a quiz next week, but not till Tuesday. Did I already say that? Yeah. So, so if we don't do one until Tuesday, I don't know if we'll do one again the very following Monday. Monday, so I don't know. next Monday, it'll be coming up back to the that's not yet. Um, we'll have to talk about that. You have to ask me that on Monday. Yeah, you can always come in at once. Like if you're doing it, yeah, that's all. Yeah, yeah, I like this. Like you don't ever have to ask me about it. Okay. The test one. Uh, yeah, yeah. The blue point will start on this. Yeah, but it wouldn't move. They blue in the morning. It wouldn't move. If it starts on the line, it stays exactly for it. Yeah, it looks like the original. Say, 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 Right. What's this? Oh, let's go ahead and do this one real quick because we got to get into rotation. Yeah. What does Z mean? Yeah, I had a D slash zero. Oh, that means that's missing. That's right. That is just the only word in here. The first two. I don't think I was clear. I don't know what that means. I hope it wasn't that one. That one's a million dollar. You never made that one up? I don't even think I was here. And I had three weeks to make it up. That's gonna hurt. that's gonna hurt then, bud. How did you not come to make the quiz? Yeah. How are you just now noticing you had a Z zero? Sorry, sorry, you did Four five weeks out. Trying to honest. Again, you had five weeks since that quiz, and we so that was actually the first quiz was actually last quarter. If you remember, we took it at the end of the first quarter. I said that will be on the next quarter. Yeah, like five weeks. You sure it was that one? Yeah. You got a lot of making up to do this quarter. You can't do that one. All right. So if y is negative x, these are some points that would work. That just means the number part is the same, but it has the opposite sign. So these points, the number part is the same, but they have opposite signs. So my Line of reflection would look something like that. If you don't understand why that's the case, then again, you got to do some more memorizing. Now, once we know where the line of reflection goes, we just need to create a point on the opposite side, same distance away. Now, I did not do this next piece yesterday. So just, I'm sorry, two days ago for you guys. I can actually count diagonally toward the line of reflection. I told you not to really do that when I did it, and I still don't like this way. It is possible. And I showed the other classes this, so I'm showing you. If I go I guess I'll just do it in this. Perfect. If I go from this point diagonally, and again, you've got to be careful to go the correct diagonal direction. It's perpendicular is the direction you're going. I can say, well, that's one diagonal line 
two diagonal lines, and then a half of a diagonal. And then I just do the same thing on the other side. Here's the half, and then there's one and there's two. So my point would go right there, the green point would go right there. Oh, my squares. Well, I'm gonna do it the other. I like that way better. So I can do that. I could do that for all the points. Again, the red one is one diagonal, two diagonals, three diagonals, four. So that was an even integer, two, three, four. It will go there. And the blue one's on it, so the blue one doesn't move. So again, I could now draw my shape in. And it would look like that. Now, I don't love that way. Don't look right. And again, if you happen to do something wrong diagonally, then you're going to mess it up. Yeah, I might. Again, you would kind of want to do it anyway, because you should, once you connect them, visually be able to say, yeah, that kind of looks right. Um, if you write the ordered pairs, I'm not as concerned about it. If you also write, even if I don't ask you to, because then I can see your answer clearly. All right, so here's the way I show. Let me just do this real quick. I showed you how to do this. I said from the original point, go in two directions. One direction left, one direction right to get to the line of reflection. I stopped at the line of reflection both times. Now, on the other side of the line of reflection, create a square. Finish this off by now going left and right and making a square. That will get you to the same point. Also, I think that's visually easier to see. Pretty tough to make mistakes when you're going left and right and up and down. Like the blue point should be too, because oh, blue points on the line of reflection. It would slide out of there. Oh. This is, you go to the opposite side of the line of reflection. There's no opposite side. <clears throat> You're somehow trying to rotate it or slide it. There's no, we're just flipping something. If I, if I flip, here's triangle, right? If that point is there and I flip it over, again, across this, then we're not flipping it left and right. We're flipping it across this. So if I fold it, let's think of that. If I folded this paper and this flips, that point is still touching that same point. It doesn't ever, this is not, a translation is the only time it slides. A rotation is the only time it would potentially move around. If it's on the line of reflection, it never moves. Never, never, never. Uh, all right, so now I can do the same thing for all the other points. So again, I draw a line from the red to the line of reflection, from the red down to the line of reflection. Now finish it off. You'll see I'm hitting the same exact points I did when I went diagonally. And then again, blue doesn't move. It stays right there. So I don't really care how you do it, as long as I can see what you did. At least did something. All right, any questions? That's the last reflection. You got a bunch. I got I got tons of practice problems. And the answers are also in the packet. You'll oh, not these. These. So the answers I copied as well and just put them in here. So you because I figured you'd be well, I, I hope you work some on your own. Um, so you can check your own answers. Uh, all right, now we're moving into rotation. This is not what we did already. We did trans. So let's good question. We did translations, which were what? So, there's like no, not turning, sliding. Right. So a translation. This just slides around. Yeah, I love doesn't that. twist, doesn't turn, doesn't do anything. If it's if it's so here we'll do it this way. If that line is straight up and down here and that line is straight left and right wherever it goes that's, that's going to be straight left and right and that's going to be straight up and down it doesn't move in any other way it's in the for a translation it just slides 
for a reflection, that's what we just did. We're flipping it over some line of reflection. It's actually flipping to its other side. So for a rotation, that's the one. Oh, what does that say? So for a rotation, that's the one. Oh, I feel like I there's something I told the other class and they didn't tell you, but I can't remember what it was. That, so for a rotation, we are only going to rotate around the origin. Hold that. Um, so again, these are rotations around everything we do. I'm not going to say it every time. But we are only rotating around the origin. If they give you something that says rotate the image around 0.1 comma 2 or something that's not 0 comma 0, just do your best to, to make a best guess. I was told when I first taught geometry that they don't test on that. Uh, and it's very complex anyway, so I don't cover it. Um, we are just going to do around the origin, which is not bad at all. I think it's actually easier than what we just finished with the reflections. No. If you follow the process, there is a definite process for it. Then. All right, so on, you can either do it on your grass. You can do it. Bro, I can't do that. We haven't even done anything. Seriously, you already said you can't do anything. We haven't done. I haven't even told you what to do. Guarantee by the end of it, you'll be like, that's easy. This is not difficult. Like I said, this is this is about as difficult as a translation or a reflection over the x y axis. It's not difficult if you follow the process. And you do need to understand some definitions. What does clockwise mean? What is that direction? This. Everybody look at the clock. You see that red hand, right? That is clockwise. It is not a left or right thing. You cannot say, oh, it's left or it's right. Because it depends on where you are. If I'm thinking of this as the middle of the clock and I'm up here, clockwise is going that way. If I'm here, clockwise is going down. If I'm here, clockwise is going left. If I'm here, clockwise is going up. So it's not a left and right, up and down thing. It's a rotation. It's a circular direction. Counterclockwise is just the opposite. So if clockwise is like that. Counterclockwise is the other direction. So you need to know those two definitions. Um, what? would like related to clockwise and counterclockwise, what would 90 degrees be? It is, but how would we, like how would we use that in a graph? Like how far would 90 degrees be? That didn't work. Like what do you think? And there's a specific way we can say it, but I want to see what you guys say first. Like, so that is one way to say it. So if we are at 12 o'clock, 90 degrees would be 3 o'clock. 90 degrees clockwise. What would 90 degrees counterclockwise? That would be 9 o'clock. So that would be 9 o'clock. So we're kind of going from here to here for 90 degrees. Or from here to here, 90 degrees, depending on direction. What would 180 be? That, uh, that would be 6 o'clock, and if it's counter, wait, no. Ooh. Hey, whoa. Wait, wait, what would be 12 o'clock? No, it'll always be, if you start at 12, 180, it doesn't matter which direction you go. It'll be, if I go 180 this way, I'm at the bottom. If I go 180 this way, I'm still at the bottom. So... What would 270 clockwise be? It would. It'd be the same thing as 90 counterclockwise. So there's your first note. So write this down. 90 degrees clockwise is the same as 270 degrees counterclockwise. 
So we don't have to learn a rule for every situation because some of them are the same. 180 clockwise is the same as 180 counterclockwise. 360, I've never actually even seen anywhere. You just wind up in the same position you started. That's why I don't think that'll be a quiz. So, um, oh, and what's happening? What do you think? Not here. Will it just give speed uh, the W or would it give clockwise? Uh, so no, you're going to have to know both. Yeah, I might I might give you clockwise or counterclockwise, but if I say that you get much shit down. I'm not going to really teach you any of the rules, but there are some rules. So if you try to learn the rules, then you need to understand because I don't think there's a rule for 270 degrees because it's the same as just using 90 degrees in the opposite direction. So that's the rule you would use. Yes, there is. And there's only one rule because it doesn't matter which direction you go. We're, I'll show you the rules after we do it the visual way, but I'm not going to teach the rules like probably most teachers do because you're not going to have those on the EOC. They don't give you the rules and to memorize all of them, including the reflections, uh, that would be challenging, I, I believe. I have had kids do it because they've written the rule down and then done the problem that way, but uh, it's few and far between that can remember all of the rules and keep them all straight at least in my experience all right so write those order or like draw the image where it goes for those ordered pairs anything you did all day long create your image And now we're going to do one of these. Uh, which one do I want to start? I guess we'll start with the easy one. 90 degrees. Um, will we see how the problems look? Or will it just for this one? Or will it just like that? Like on the test, like, will we see how the problems look? There's a bunch of different ways you can. I, might, I could just give you this. I could just give you three three ordered pairs and say rotate that image 90 degrees clockwise. Oh, is that how it is? Good. There's a ball again. I don't I'll probably give you a few different ways. They won't all be done the same way because I want you to see different potential questions on the midterm and the EOC. So one might say, here's your three ordered pairs, rotate it clockwise. 90 degrees. One might say. Here's an image, rotate it 270 degrees counterclockwise or reflect or do whatever. So I'm going to give you different types of questions asked in different ways. And you got to know how to, and I think the packets that I give you, I think they've given you different types of questions also asking things in different ways. All right, so here's what I want you to do with that image, which should hopefully look like that image. I want you to rotate that 90 degrees clockwise. I'll give you a little hint. If I'm rotating it 90 degrees around the origin, it doesn't just spin in place. That triangle's not just going to twist and turn right where it is. If it's rotating around the origin, you have to imagine that it it's like orbiting around the sun. Like our planet doesn't just spin in place, right? While it spins, it goes around the sun. So while this is turning, it's actually moving around the origin. So it's going to wind up where if it's going 90 degrees. It's going to be in the top right quadrant. So it'll it'll move quadrants. So here's kind of some tips. If you're rotating a figure, it changes quadrants and it also turns. It does both. I'm going to give you a super simple version in a minute, but just try to do it on your own. 
That's it. Um, because if it rotates this, this left side kind of becomes the top side. This one, you maybe you like, you reflect it. You know, reflect So again, I'll give you another hint. If I'm rotating this, the sides actually change. So this kind of bottom left side will turn and sort of become the top left. This top left kind of turns and becomes the top right. This side that's almost straight up and down will rotate around and be kind of the bottom side, sort of. I'm about to show you why I'm, I'm not going to. I just want to see if anybody's super big. If you're really, really visual, you just you can probably see how that's going to row. Again, the key is these points need to be the same distance away from the origin. They don't they don't they don't slide around or flip. They're just rotating around that. They need to still be the same distance from that origin. Though. You could actually kind of there's a way to count and figure it out using counting. So there's a way to do it just visually if you're just really visual. And then I'm going to give you the easy way to do it. So. I am going to Hmm. You guys should not be using pin. I know that. I see you have an eraser pin. Well, that's not very good for her back. It's not wide enough. Yeah. I'm using a pen since it's higher here. How's that work? You do have a good drawing. It does work better for drawing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, all your other classes. I think they use it because sometimes I do great papers and I can't even like read the writing you guys write so light. And I blame it on mechanical pencils because if you try to write dark with a mechanical pencil, the lead breaks. So I blame the pencils, but at the same time, you need to write dark. Uh, wait till I do this. I got to show you this super shortcut, easy version, which makes this as easy as anything else we do in transformations. All right, raise your hand if you think you got it. Raise your hand if you're like a super easy way that works every time. Really, that's all? Only those people. So here's what you do. If we are, again, this is only around the origin. I won't always say that, but I will today. If I'm rotating around the origin, it's like revolving around the sun. All I oh, so you have to ignore, make sure you do this. Ignore the x and the y axis. Like the fact that you have an x axis and a y axis and the numbers on them, you got to ignore them because they're actually going to change positions the way we do this. I just take the graph itself, the whole graph. So you would just take your paper and if it's a 90 degree clockwise rotation, I rotate it 90 degrees. Turn the whole thing. So I took the top and I rotate it 90 degrees clockwise. That's where your image goes, right there. That's the answer. Wait. Oh. Now, though, if I ask you what are the ordered pairs, what are the new coordinates, you have to think of this now as the X, because originally it was the Y. That's why I say ignore it. The fact that there's an X and a Y. This is now the X. That's your Y. And just write all your ordered pairs. The green is at one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So four, comma, seven. The red is at, so I just know it's seven. One, two, three, four, five. So seven, here, hold on. Hold that. Let's actually do it this way. Get my cells. So I'm going to write it down. So the new. Uh, so the new red is at seven five. Wait. Yeah. So seven five. Seven five. I'm going to rewrite this. Four seven. 
four, seven. Uh, I'm going to get rid of that. Just remember, it's around the origin. And the blue is at one, three. But all you got to do is rotate the whole ground. This is like, yeah, there's a rule. This is, this is like the, it's like, you know, how Y equals negative X. This is the opposite. This is like negative Y equals X. There is a, so for rotations, there are rules. There's three of them. Well, there's more than three of them, but you really only have to learn three of them. There's a rule for a 90 degree rotation clockwise. A 90 degree rotation counterclockwise and then a 180 degree rotation. So what did you notice about what happened with all those points? Same thing happened every single time. The number part changes. So if we were to create the rule and we said, well, I'm starting with an X and a Y value, what happens to them? They change positions, first of all, right? So the Y and the X change positions. And then what happened? Well, don't think of it as negative. Think of it as opposite. Which one became the opposite? Uh, well, again, I guess it should say, depending on where you think about it starting. Yeah, the what was originally the Y stayed the same sign or sign when it became the X. What was originally the X flipped signs when it became the Y. So that's the rule for a 90 degrees clockwise rotation. Again, I don't have you memorize it because it's super easy to get this confused with a counterclockwise 90 degrees. Um, it's really also easy to get it confused with some of the reflections, the later reflections we did, like y equals x, y equals negative x. But there is a rule for all the rotations. The rules. I mean, you can also count, like if you understand visually that I started here and from the origin, I went left. Again, this is where the original point was left three and up one, I think is where it was. Well, if you now think of this as the center and we're turning the graph, I go up three and right one. So again, there is a way, but turning the graph is the easiest way by far. Like, even if you don't get graph paper, it doesn't have to be perfect because the, the numbers aren't changing, right? Like the X and the Y still have the same number part. The sign might change, but I could. See if this will all. Yeah, so, oh wait, no. I could, even if I didn't have graph paper, I could just say, well, let me just draw a graph. It doesn't have to be perfect. I have a point. I don't, I'm not even going to write numbers on there at all. I'm not even going to label the numbers. I'm going to say, well, I know I have one point at negative seven, positive four. Oh, let me do that. So that's four. So one point's there, right? All right. I have one point at negative five. Now I have to kind of have them in the same relationship to each other. So if that's negative seven, Negative five is probably like right there. And then positive seven would be higher, right? And then my last point is negative three. So that'd be way in here probably. And positive one. I got one point. There's my original triangle, right? The numbers do not change. So I, and you do this on your paper. Well, I'm not. Oh, actually, yeah, I can. So you do this on your paper. Draw it out real quick. I know that I'm still going to have for this point, I'm going to have a seven and a four. For this point, I'm going to have a five and a seven. For this point, I'm going to have a three and a one. All I got to do is figure out where does the negative sign go and in which position are they going. So now you take your paper. Hopefully, I can. Oh, there we go. I was gonna say, why is it working? So you take your paper and turn your paper. Ah, oh, probably not gonna be able to do it up there. So now turn your paper where you just kind of sketched it out 90 degrees. Now figure out which point should be. 
Well, I got a positive one and a positive three, right? I don't, it doesn't matter if I didn't draw, make a perfect drawing. I know the numbers because I wrote them down. That's still one and that's still three. Ignore the fact that it says negative because it's this quadrant and there's no negatives in this quadrant. So you got to use a little bit of intuition. I really think you get a piece of graph paper though, so I'm not super worried about it. You're going to have, I'm, I'm almost positive you get graph paper, so you'll be able to do exactly what you're going to do. Did you create the um, midterm or they did? The midterm is generated by the district. I don't do a single thing with the midterm. We're doing it in here or it's like, yeah, it's on the computer, so we'll have to go to the lab. I, mean, I think I do take my classes to do it. I don't think you're proctored by somebody else. You might be, though. It might not even be me. You, you, it's like a secured, proctored tech, like an uh, um, EOC, a SAT, ACT. Uh, so again, this point would just be 1, 3. Well, and 1, 3. This point that was on 4 and 7, well, I know now that the numbers don't change, but my X is 4, my Y is 7, and they're both positive, so 4 and 7. And then this point would be 7, and again, it's negative 5, but we ignore the that. We just need the number part, and they're both positive, so 7 and 5. So even if you didn't get graph paper, you could still do this. It might take you a minute to figure out how to do it, but I'm almost positive you get a piece of paper. I mean, you could actually just look at the computer screen and like just kind of turn your head and count too. I just wouldn't miss. When they had laptops, I told them just turn the whole laptop. Oh. Hmm? You get well, I don't know. Something tells me you're fine with looking silly if it helps out. <laughs> well, I know about a desktop monitor, but I did tell them to turn the laptop. I said, if you have a laptop, pick it up and rotate that laptop. However far you need to rotate that screen. Um, all right. Nothing different for any of the other rotations other than you turn them either a different direction or you might turn them farther. You might turn it twice. So if I would have said, well, what if that was a 100? Oh, why does it let me do that on the screen? If I would have said 180 degrees, you would have just turned it one more time. So for 180 degrees, now again, you got to kind of figure out where the numbers are, but the numbers don't change. This point, uh, yeah, you guys write what you think that 180 degrees is. Turn, turn it one more time and try to figure out what 180 degrees is. So you can use the original you drew, like from the points that I gave you originally, the, the pre-image. Turn it twice okay. instead of once, and no. what are the new X and Y's? No. You can figure it though. So it'll be, again, if it started here, one thing you should know is it moves twice. So it'll be down here. So X will be, oh, and again, the quadrants tell you anyway what the X and the Y values are. So Y would be negative. Yeah. If I'm in this quadrant, they're both positive. And by the, if I'm in this quadrant, X is positive, Y is negative. If I'm, if I'm in this quadrant, X and Y are negative. And if I'm in this quadrant, X is negative, Y is positive. Is this right? You just got to figure out what the order is. Let's wait a second, and then I'm fine with you guys going. Sure. Uh, I'll match up and see if you guys are getting the same thing. Oh, write the ordered pairs down for me. That'll be faster. I did that already, so. Uh, let's see. Did you write them down, Gabby? Yeah, I did. These are the new Those are not matching. Oh no, I did the wrong steam. Wait, so I need a tiebreaker. Oh, I need a look. I need a tiebreaker. Uh, these are the new ones right here. Got a seven. Oh, I didn't go back to the Y is supposed to be negative. That looks certainly closer. I didn't. I don't remember them exactly. Yeah, it's. Yeah. Like, I'm not it's, it's the right. four negative seven for the first one. Four negative seven exactly. picture. Don't you flip it? Should have been it. I did it. So it should have been. Uh, one. 
I just read them all. All right, let's go ahead and all I got to do, I've already turned it twice. All I've got to do is figure out what the X and the Y's are now. So for this point, again, my X values are all positive if I'm in this quadrant. So every X value is going to be positive. So you should have had, which one is that? The blue should be three comma negative one. So that should have been one of your points. The, what was it, green, which was the seven and the four part, should have been positive seven, negative four. And the red, which was five and seven, should have been positive five, negative seven. That's your point. So again, there is no really other, like with reflections, there were like six different things you could see. Rotations, I mean, you just rotate it one more time or go the other direction or something. This country, then we just flip both. Like if it's a negative, it becomes positive, and if it's positive. Oh, so for the, yeah, so the rule for 180, again, just in case you see it, there is a rule for this one. There's a rule for all rotations. So if I start with an X and a Y, what happened? For these, what happened to the X and the Y? So this was the original, and we went to that. Well, and, well, actually, why, no, I'm sorry. Why did it, they, the, the, num the numbers, the X and the Y didn't change positions, let's say that. Why? It's flipping, it's can get confused. Why did it, the only the sign flip, right? Why is it? Why is it? As, again, that's just the way it works out. If they're in one position here and you rotate it twice, you're you're just moving the x value to the opposite side almost of the origin. Like the x that started here winds up landing over there if you rotate it twice. It's a 180 degree rotation. That's just what happens. Physically, what happens. Uh, I think I was folding miles, I think so. Uh, so again, the order is the same. The X's and the Y's, the number part is still in the same spot. We just need to flip the sign of both. The negative three became positive three, positive one became negative one. So when you write the rule, you would just say it becomes negative X, negative Y. That's the rule for that. If you do a rotation counterclockwise 90 degrees, um, well, actually, we can do that by just doing this one one more time because 270 clockwise is the same thing as 90 counterclockwise. So there, if we did it one more time, really quickly, I'm going to write the ordered pairs out. So that becomes negative seven, negative five for red. For green, it would become negative four, negative seven. And what do I have left? Blue. So for blue, it becomes negative one, well, negative one, negative three. So again, there's a rule for that. So a 90 degree counterclockwise rotation. Well, I can't squeeze it in. Well, here, we all we really needed to see is one. So the X's and the Y's do change position for a 90 degree counterclockwise rotation. So again, this is 90 degrees counterclockwise. So your X and your Y change position. Kind of like when we did 90 degrees clockwise, they changed position. And then the sign, so the original negative three is still negative three, so that doesn't change. So the X stays the same, but the Y that was one became negative one. So it's kind of the opposite of what happened when we did 90 degrees clockwise. It seems like less that there's like rules for the directions and more like there's rules for each quadrant. 
And and it is if you know which quadrant it's gonna be in, that is sort of true, but it's like the bottom right one. Y is always connected. Yeah. yeah. But again, it's less than one that exists. Flipping position that changes like if you can come up with your own, then that's fine if you understand it, but I'm not going to try to create one because it's because of the changing quadrants and you're actually spinning the image that it'd be a little tricky to just say, oh, well, depending on the quadrant, I can figure it out. Because you're still going to have to change the X and the Y value sometimes, but sometimes you don't. Uh, all right, so that's rotations. Uh, I will give you these packets. We're not really working on these today because I'm going to show you the problem that I'm going to give you again. But we're on the last quiz. I'm giving it to you again. Is that, is that start with page one? I mean, problem one. No. Oh. I'll we'll stay on that for So again, I'm going to follow the page. Okay. You pass it now. It's in that. I'll just pass it around. Oh, okay. Just take one and pass it back. That's way faster than one. Uh, I'm going to give you just a, a decent amount of these. We'll take one, take on, and pass one around. No need. Nice. Oh, okay. so take one and just make sure everybody gets one, basically. I'll start these on this side, and you can work to do that. You know, when you can get one into Ronaldo. If not, I'll just do one. I like think you and Sarah can probably figure it out. Just that you can get those to Ronaldo. So we'll see if you have extras. Do you have a bunch of extras there? Uh, do these guys have them? There. What's the only uh, here? Yeah. Yeah, there's no point. Oh, yeah, look at the very first problem. Let me explain how it works. Once everybody gets one, I guess. Uh, did you get one, Brian? Let's see. Make sure Brian gets one, please. Laura, you can grab one. I'll pick those. Make sure you start at number like the first page starts at number one. Sometimes the the copier machine doesn't staple the first page to the rest of the packet. That actually happens quite often. So if you need to staple it, I'll I'll come around in a minute and we'll do that. I'm holding Miles still, so actually Miles, you can. If you want, you can go back to show a problem that's also going to be on the quiz, but if you want to go ahead and go, it's recorded already. You can see it. So it's it's old material. So it's your chance at getting a free retake question without having to go to tutoring on it. And remember, hour of tutoring for every 40 or below. Now on. Are you going to do it? Nope. I, I can still Again, the, the same people do geeks. They actually get paid to do that. They get paid for that? Oh, I actually Uh, Yeah, I mean, you're working after your hours. So it's it's kind of like overtime. Only uh, all right, look at the very first problem. You'll notice there's not, it looks almost like there's nothing there. There is a single point that you are reflecting. So there is a point there. It's just, it's not a shape. You can reflect points. That's actually how I told you to create images, is you do it point by point. So you're just going to do it for that one point. You're just going to reflect that, draw in the Y axis really dark, and then go take, go from that point W, count toward the Y axis towards the line of reflection and then keep counting the same distance to the other side. And that's where the, the point will go oh, for your reflection. Right? That's the Y is the verb. So again, some of them only have one point. Exactly. Uh, it's the same thing we did when we did a shape. We did it one point at a time. Now, here's the next thing. Turn to the second page. And then look at the back of the second page. That's the answer. So you didn't have any issues practicing on your own. 
So again, go to the second page and look at the back of the second page where it said problem one again, and it's the same problem. Only now you can see where W prime is. So you have all the answers. So then there's a second packet. Well, then there's a second packet, second set of problems, because the first packet didn't have any rotation. So I think it's like the fourth page starts another set of problems. So that's only about 12 problems, I think. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's 18 problems. Some of those are rotations. And then after that, it's actually, no, it's 24. But all the answers are written really small. For the, the last, very, very last page is the answers to the second set of problems. So you have all the answers. On the y-axis, when you must be this. Yeah, so you darken in the y-axis, count from the point to the y or to the line of reflection, and then keep going the same distance, and then that's where you put your reflection. Oh, that's all we're doing. Okay. Yeah, but then there's just one point to do it. Uh, all right, so we're not working on this, so don't get dug in because I want you. You'll have some time at the end, but I want to make sure we get through. What is your free retake question? Uh, oh, that's in the other. This, no, this here. All right, so we did on the other quiz, you did lines or parallel, perpendicular, or neither. And then we did the one that we really went through fast and was probably the more difficult question. And I told you I would give you another shot at that one question. So we're going to do this problem again on the next quiz. You've already seen it once. Some of you, if you've got 100 on the quiz and meaning you got that one right, then you don't you have to worry about this one on the next quiz. But I mean, if you didn't get 100 on the last quiz or you didn't get this question right, I'm going to break this out as its own separate grade when I grade this weekend. I'm just saying. So if you get like, let's say, there's probably only one option. You're either going to get a zero for this one question or you're going to get a 100. I'm probably not going to do so partial. Uh, we'll see. Because if I'm giving you another shot at it, you better do better on this one, no matter what, about what you me, do. First one. What about me? So. Go ahead right now. You think if you need a graph, I'll give you more paper. We are now doing the distance between a point and a line. So if you have a blank graph on your reflections, or if you want to try to find old graphs from when we did this before, draw the line that goes through these points. So that's basically the blue line I've already graphed, but you can do it on your paper. Yeah. And then put this point on the graph. So it should look just like what I've already done for you right there. So I don't like. That is the back right here. Slope. Oh, not. Well, that's the last piece, but first you got to do the slope Where? way over there. The y M, Y2, the y1. That's the fraction. So if you want to try to do it, you can go ahead and get started. But first, you need to at least draw the line to point. Well, are these questions going to find? Yeah, it was on the other quiz. Okay. Yes. Oh, what thing you Oh, yeah. If you need more graph paper, raise your hand. Will it be a separate grade for me or would it be? And you're that? actually, we're just going to do one of these. So you, if you have one graph, you're good. Oh, wait. Well, let's cut this. The distance is one. Yeah, yeah. I think we already did this. Yeah, we already did this one before. I mean, you can see it straight from some things. That's going to be his point. Uh, you see that? Raise your hand again if you need. Like you're out of graphing. And we won't, we're only doing one of these. So if you have one free graph, just make sure you label that graph, the one you're working on. This is the distance between a point and a line. We're not doing. Reflection, rotation, so don't get them confused. Make sure you understand that we did kind of a review problem.
Who, uh, who was after Mao? I know a couple of people had asked. Would this be a separate group? Would this be included on my test here since I hit the test here? I mean, it's on both of them, so I'll just wind up taking the highest grade between the two. So. By the time. Oh, so, yeah, I have a question. If we get 100 on the test and then we fail this one, will we get a zero? Again, I, I always take the highest grade. Okay. So if I'm putting in grades and I see you have a higher grade already in the grade book, I don't what, change it. We'll, is this a stapler? What's the answer for this? That, yeah, that little thing, but it takes many, many staples. I don't have, it doesn't take normal staples. Really? That's so cute. Did it yeah, but it's, yeah, I can't find staples though. Got special order in. Oh my gosh, there's scissors too. What the? How do you oh yeah, it's like a utility knife for teacher. Holy like crap! A Swiss Army knife. What? What's the remover? It's got a is, it in in is this a staple? It's got a staple. Oh. I know, right? I, it doesn't. Oh, it half of it doesn't work. So I. Card opener. There's a lens. Oh, this is something that has to be That's Here. the ruler right there. Holy, but, oh my god, know, right? That's so lit, bro. And then this tape. is something I don't know. Oh, yeah, there's actual tape in there, scotch tape. No way, teeny, teeny, tiny thing of roll of scotch tape. I think that's still in there, too. The stapler doesn't work. Well, I, it's just empty. All right, I'm just gonna stop. Don't you have a little bit? Yeah, that's why I can't get rid of it. No, that's the way. Oh, I'll flip one. So after you do that, we have to put those create some blue. Blue. We have to create. But once you find the slope of the blue line, what do you have to do? It's perpendicular. Yeah. So you got to create the perpendicular it. slope from the original yeah. slope. Correct. So I'll let you guys work on it for a second. It's because some of you look like you're kind of making progress on it. So now we do. That's the first step. Yeah. So we need to measure distance. How do we measure distance? We said with the key. So you mean like after the perpendicular Well, fine. There's a specific thing we have to do. Like we said, well, if I want to measure the distance between this point and this line, I don't just count to the right. I don't just count down. What do I have to do? What direction do I need to count? We need to count at a 90 degree angle. We need to count in a perpendicular direction. So what you have to do is take the slope of this line and find out what the perpendicular slope would be. Because we're going to use that, that to, to go from the red to the blue. How did you get the red? That was that's on the, the, that's the four three, right? Okay. Yeah, that was that was the in point the, I gave you in the problem. The line is zero and it's three seconds we'll Yeah, correct. The one I, that's why I put it in blue is to show you that was the how I got the line. And do you want us to put the blue line to on the I mean again, I already did it on the original. I might not draw this out for you on the next version, by the way. What do you mean? Like on the quiz you haven't taken yet, yeah. I drew the line and the point. So, on the, to find the blue line, you would do the. Well, to find it, you just write these two points on the graph and just Okay. So I did that for them on the quiz that you haven't taken yet. I just went ahead and drew the line on there and put the point on there. I might not do that though. I probably won't do that on the next quiz. I'll just give you the writing part up here. And then you'll have to, to put it on the ground. Uh, if you even want to, you don't it's really. Involved. I guess you kind of have to. And then to so put it on the graph, you would do that or no? No, that's to find the slope. To put it on the graph, you just say, where is point 0.7 comma 4? Oh, no. oh, right there. Where is point zero negative 3? Right there. And then you just connect them with one. Yeah, you just graph the points. Or you just plot the points. All right, so let's go ahead and get through this. We're we got plenty of time. I want to make sure we finish it and we have time for questions. So if I once you've created again, you might have to do this part. All you do to create the line is just put those two points on the graph. The two points that make up the blue line, you just put them on the graph. 
So I just oh, I just put zero negative three on the graph. I put seven comma four on the graph, and then I just drew a line through those two points. That's all you're gonna have to do on the quiz to create the line. All right. Then to get the other point on there, I just put point four comma three on the graph. Make sure you know how to put a point on a graph, left or right first, then up or down. Now, here's your process. So again, if you want to write this down, you could already have it, but if you want to just make another note. To find the distance between a point and a line. That's what we're about to do. So, so find the distance between a point and a line. Got to give you the steps. I'll let you write that. Wander the whole process. I'm going over the whole process for it. But that would be the last piece of the process. So again, to find the distance between the point and the line. You may want to make a note because it's not really a step because it depends on whether or not you already have it. You need a graph of the point and the line. You need to see them visually. It's a visual thing. You, know, you can just write, you know, like, I would normally write notes like N O T E and then a colon. You need a visual picture of the point and the line. You can't do it. I mean, there is a way to do it, but we didn't run it. It's very complex. So you need to have the point and the line visually in front of you to do this. I gave that to you on the last quiz. I'm probably not going to give it to you on this next quiz when you get the free retake. So once you have that, here's your process. Step one is what? Find the slope of the line. Yes. Whatever the line is, the two points that make up the line, find the slope of the line. Thank you. How do you find the slope of the line? Perpendicular to that slope. So that's step one. Find the slope of the line. Again, you use these two points. You label them x1, y1, x2, y2. If you need to see that process, you have to watch the other video. I'm not going through every single step, but it uses the slope formula, which will be up in the room. And you just say y2 subtract y1 divided by x2 subtract x1. The only slightly tricky part is if you get a fraction like that, you, to you need to simplify it. And then you have to turn it into negative one to get it to be the. So now, once you've done that step and simplified it, what is step two? That is step two. I didn't write simplify in there. If you need to make a note that you need to simplify the slope, if you need to under, like if you need to make a note that you need to simplify seven over seven into one over one, you can make that note on your own. You'll have the example. Hopefully you're doing the math while you're writing your notes. So now you find the perpendicular slope. How do you do that? You will explain what flipping it means because there's a lot of different kind of flips. Dominator and numerator, and then you need the math words and everything. <laughs> and you get the numerator negative. Yeah, so we take so. the. I'm gonna not use math words. Okay. I'm gonna say take the bottom number and put it on top. Take the top number and put it on bottom. Make the numerator. In this case, it's the same thing. So actually, here I'll do this. And so this slope was one over one. Now we again. Taking the bottom and putting it on top and top and putting it on the bottom doesn't really change anything for this one, but we do need to make it a negative number. Do not flip both signs because that would still be a positive number. The reason I need this to be negative and this to be positive is because remember, we multiply perpendicular slopes, we should get negative one. So if both of them, like if this is a positive number and this is a positive number, we don't get negative one. So make sure one of them is positive, that's positive, and one of the slopes is negative. 
And if you really want to check, you can multiply them together when you create the perpendicular slope and you should get negative one. Mm -hmm. You really want to check. Yeah, so now the last step, which is a little tough to write, you need to work your way from the, right the point that is not on the line, so I would say the point not on the line, toward the line using, how would I even write? There's a lot to write. I don't know how I would write. Um, and it's right down. Yeah, I mean, again, I don't really know how to write this. Isn't it? Like, your visual, it's a visual thing. So visual, visual step or something. I mean, again, I, you got to use your own words for this. Visual, visually go from point to line, I guess. You, again, just use your own words. I'm writing down just so I have it up there. So I'm going to show you what it is. You use your own words for step three. And then you would show, right? I start yeah. at this point, right? So I got to start at the point. Now, let's say, and this wouldn't even really be what would happen with we're using the perpendicular slope because we want to create a perpendicular line because that's how we measure distance to this negative. Let's say you happen to, to count the slope out and you wind up doing this. How would you do that? Just because I'm showing what could happen and how you have to. Oh, to find the line? Yeah, let's say you go to count using this perpendicular slope and you're going in the wrong direction. What do you need to do? You, you change both directions. Yep. So instead of going left one, up one, we go right one, down one. Yep. And if you do that, you should land right on the line and you should land on the line at two spots that are exactly on integers on your x and y axis. And the five point is five comma two. I'm the oh wait, so wait, that's the answer? Yeah. Well, that's your other point. <laughs> so you now have this original point, right? Which, whoop, that's not right. Yeah. I have to do distance equals x2 minus x1 plus so that was the original point. So now you have two points. You have an X1, Y1, X2, Y2. You just plug those into that formula, the distance formula. Or if you remember, I showed you how to create a right triangle. And then using a right triangle, you could do A squared, B squared, B squared. Okay, because after the 5, 2, I do that to not sign it. Yeah, so again, you're just finding the distance between these two points. That point there, well, I'll do this. X2. You're finding the distance between that point and that point. Because that that would be the distance between the point and the line, right? The distance between this point and that point. Well, that point's on the line. So it'll be the distance between the point and the line. Wait, one, two, three, three points. Uh, you know, that's what I thought it was. Uh, I'm barely. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. So I did have it right the first time. I don't know why I changed it. I mean, you should already have it on your paper. But or so, oh, I think I maybe was looking at that or something. So yeah, let's get rid of that. I was just showing you what you need to do. Uh, you were going the wrong direction. So there we go. Uh, yeah, the original point was four comma three, not three comma four, which I had. So I'll just tell you your answer when you're doing it. Oh, don't forget to take the square root at the end. That's what that that little bit. It's not a division symbol. That is a square root symbol around all of that other stuff. So you can do the math and then square root. So you have to, yeah. So you'll get, you should get one squared or maybe negative one squared plus one squared, something like that. So if you square a negative, it's a positive. So you should get one, one squared plus one squared. So remember that one plus one is two squared. And then you take the square root of two. Like that. Again, you'd be saying y subtract y. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, I I had that wrong. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's why I changed. Yeah, and it says that up in the original point. I just didn't scroll back up to see the original point. So that's not a three. That's what it is. Yeah, so it should be four comma three. If you didn't see that, I changed that. That's what we started with in the problem. It just gave you that. Now you should. You should never like remember there's no such thing as a negative once you square it. I don't care what your calculator says. Because in your calculator, if you put in negative one and then you square it, it'll tell you negative one. Uh, no, when you square it, when you yeah, take square. you're doing square. You should get a negative. I mean the calculator says negative. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Squaring is that. Yeah. So that's if you're negative, which is yeah. yeah, that's if you take the square root. I think I think I got it now. Square root. Oh, is it square root? This is one. Are you using this button or this button? This button. Negative. Oh, that's a square root. Oh, the first square root. You're talking about square root. I'm talking about square root. Oh, uh, I, I interpreted it wrong. I know I'm being subtracted. I'm just tripping. You're tripping. No, you're tripping. You're tripping. You're tripping. You're tripping. <laughs> Is this right? Uh, 1.4, square root of 2 or 1.4? Or 1.41? Carry it out one more. So you take. So you'll get a free retake on that. Is it the second? The Again, it's not like it's going to make your grand overall grade go from a 40 to a 50, but it'll raise it a little bit. And then I might do that sometimes in the future. But you need to go to tutoring and retake some of the whole quizzes. Oh, what button is that? The button on your phone. You like to help? Yeah, that's the Oh, I did. Oh, I did. Oh, yeah, no, I'm going to. I didn't know it well enough to know that. Well, I got to stop the recording. That's your number, Shaquille. Yeah. I think I'm going to get a good.